I'm Fernando Sanchez. I was a participant at the Joshua Tree Highlands Artist Residency in 2009. I no longer make art, but still consider myself an artist. I write and have directed a few projects since then. It was during my residency that I started shifting my efforts. I began talking to myself, recording it, monologues I used to write and perform. Soon out of the residency, I tried to write a novel, but found myself a little overwhelmed by the learning curve, so I turned to scripts. I wrote a feature that I soon condensed into a short, shot it in two days, used it as a business card to get some money to start a bigger project. This project would take us three years to complete. With only $35,000 as a budget, my friend and I would go on to shoot in over 52 locations with a cast of 33 plus and perform nearly every duty. Casting, cinematography, sound recording, boom operating, catering, producing, art production, set design, stunt driving, voice actor, and of course, writing, directing, and editing. It was a bit nuts. It showed me I could move mountains, and it was meant to be a film that rearranges itself according to an algorithm we would build, but we ran out of the money to develop it. So instead, we pivoted and made it into an episodic series, five episodes of 20-something minutes each, faked the rearranging aspect of it just to show the concept with old-school edits, and we screened it at several film festivals, including here in LA, at the Arc Light Theater, which was really cool. I got married that same year to a beautiful, extroverted woman, the complete opposite of me. I remember something Jim told me at the end of the uh, residency when I made a video similar to this. So, are you like a one-man band? He saw how I like doing a little of everything. Writing, at the time rapping, yes, rapping. Comfortable both in front and behind the camera. And it stuck with me, the question. I wasn't sure if I wanted to be a one-man band, but it was my comfort zone. And this kind of all came together for me in filmmaking. I cried the morning after my first day of shooting all night. I was so happy. It felt like home. This is my place, I thought. Then my life suddenly took a turn when my mom unexpectedly passed away a few years ago. It took some time for me to return to any kind of practice. And when I did, I finally had the novel I'd been wanting to write. And I spent the next two years working on it through the pandemic. It's my own version of Joyce's A Portrait of the Artist as a Young Man, but with a Mexican-American artist growing up in the 80s, 90s, at the turn of the century, and spanning from the isolated ranches of the Chihuahuan Desert to the suburban picket fences of Greater LA. It's ultimately a love story between my parents and I. The agent I'm talking to likes to call it an autofiction novel. I'm good with that. Sell it however you can. I just want eyes to read my soul or listen. I also hosted a podcast during the pandemic called Midlife Quarantine. Got one right up. New York Times passed on me. Whatever. I currently make a living as a director of photography, sometimes director, sometimes editor, slash producer, like Jim said, one man band. I remember this specific event from the residency. I was at the grocery store trying to greet the clerk at Stater Brothers, but my mouth was hot, dry, and chalky, and I realized then I hadn't talked to anyone in about a week. I drove back that afternoon thinking I could do this for a while. I could go weeks, months, work in isolation and for extended periods of time. Whether that proclivity is for the better or the worse is really up to me, but my time at the residency revealed the role and importance of solitude in my life, and I'm forever thankful for it. Jim and Fred, thank you so much for those two wonderful months.